Yes, there is cool guitar, cool guitar in Togo right now, and Charlie is back to back. It's, it's hot, the sweet, everything, you know, is on fire. You understand? That's why we're going to break it down for you to understand. And I'm going to let you watch the whole scene. You understand what is happening currently in Togo? The story behind the constitutional coup d'etat. And you also understand that, yes, let me just brief you before we head into the video so that as we are watching the video, you'll be understanding what it is all about because the issue is that. Um, the, 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 the government currently have planned a constitution or have they have crafted a constitution which is only going to allow members of parliament to vote for president. You understand? So let's say coming to Ghana, let me take Ghana for example. If uh, parliament, we have parliament for uh, the decision making body for the country, you understand? For instance, we have 275 plus parliamentarians. If that constitution is into existence, it means that only the 275 parliamentarians are those that are going to vote for President John Dramani Mahama and President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. That is if this type of constitution is to be in Ghana. So right now it is happening in Togo and I want to play the video and you watch the whole scene. It's fire and it's back to back. And the whole story, how it started and where it is now landing so that you also understand and also give up your point of view. And I pray and wish that now this shouldn't go far because most of the West African countries is now coup reigning, coup reigning because yes, uh, Niger, Burkina Faso, a lot of you know African countries is happening right now and it's keep on burning. You understand? This is really serious. The military is taking over everywhere, and I don't know if this will also happen to uh, Ghana. But in Ghana, I don't think something like that will happen because we have competent president. Uh, His Excellency Nana Adudangpa Akufuado, we have competent president, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, we have competent president Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, we have competent presidential candidate Cheddar Cheddar, and we have Alan Cheddar Mantin, we have, you know, a lot of, yeah, we, we, so there is not going to be coup d'etat in Ghana. I don't know what happens in the future, but right now we have the competent people. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go straight to the story and you get the vibe and feel the vibe. Let's After Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso and Senegal, another West African country, is starting a fight for complete freedom. Tensions are on the rise in Togo, following the adoption of a new constitution on March 25, 2024. The constitution now grants Parliament the power to elect the President of the Republic, which means that the Togolese will no longer have the privilege of electing their President. This change has caused unrest among the people and the situation has been further aggravated by the indefinite postponement of the legislative and regional elections, which were originally scheduled for April 20th, 2024. As a result, the political opposition and civil society organizations have taken to the streets in protests. They are calling for their voices to be heard and demanding that the government address their concerns. However, instead of addressing the situation, the government has responded with repression and arrests. Togo is a small country with a population of approximately 9 million people as of 2024. However, despite its size, it has been ruled by the same family for an astonishing 57 years. The country was initially led by Ayadema Nasingbe, who came to power in a military coup in 1967 and ruled with an iron fist until his death in 2005. He was succeeded by his son, Faureg Nasingbe, who has been in office ever since. Faureg Nasingbe's ascension to power was highly controversial, with the opposition alleging that the elections were rigged in his favor. This sparked widespread protests across the country, with many Togolese demanding an end to the family's long reign. However, the protests were met with brutal repression, with security forces using tear gas and live ammunition to disperse crowds. Despite this, the opposition has continued to push for democratic reforms and an end to the Nasingbe dynasty. In 2017, a wave of protests erupted across the country, with thousands taking to the streets to demand the president's resignation and an overhaul of the political system. These protests were met once again with a violent crackdown, with dozens of people killed and hundreds arrested. Looking at what is happening now, the new Togolese constitution brings about significant changes in the country's political landscape. One of the most notable changes 
is the elimination of direct voting rights for the presidential election. Instead, a parliamentary government system will be introduced, where the president will be elected by members of parliament, instead of through universal voting rights. It appears that the leader is employing a strategy to uphold their position of authority and secure their family's legacy in power. However, one potential concern is that the new constitution does not take into account the time already spent in power. This could potentially allow Faureg Nyasingbe, who has been in power since 2005, to remain in office until 2031 if he is re-elected in 2025. Additionally, the presidential term has been extended by one year, from five to six, while limiting the number of mandates to one. Experts suggest that the power will now rest in the hands of the President of the Council of Ministers, who will assume the role of Prime Minister, appointed by the deputies. The proposal to create the position of President of the Council of Ministers in Togo has caused a stir among the opposition. This new position would hold sovereign functions, granting the holder real power. The mandate for this position is set at six years with no indication of whether it can be renewed or not. The opposition's concern is that President Fora Gnasingbe may be appointed to this role, allowing him to remain in power indefinitely. The initiators of these reforms have put forward a compelling argument, claiming that the changes will bolster democracy, enhance the protection of citizens' rights and freedom, and promote greater efficiency and representativeness in institutions. They also propose a shift towards a parliamentary system for greater governmental stability and a political framework that encourages citizens to engage more actively in decision-making processes. Despite these lofty goals, the opposition and civil society are up in arms, denouncing the move as a constitutional coup d'etat and accusing the president of attempting to cling to power. The Conference of Bishops of Togo has raised concerns about the timing of a proposed constitutional reform. They have urged the president to delay the implementation of the new constitution and instead prioritize an inclusive political dialogue. The bishops believe that this dialogue should occur after the upcoming legislative and regional elections have taken place. Following widespread protests in response to the adoption of this new constitution, President Fora Nasingbe has requested a re-examination of the text in the National Assembly. In light of the political tensions, the President has also postponed the legislative and regional elections originally slated for April 20, 2024, with no new date set yet. To address the concerns of the people, the National Assembly will embark on a three-day tour across the country to consult traditional leaders and various organized groups on how to improve the constitution. This campaign, known as the Information and Listening Tour of the Populations on the Revision of the Constitution, aims to present the new constitution to the public and gather their feedback. Meanwhile, the opposition and civil society have called for three days of demonstrations on April 11th, 12th, and 13th, 2024, as part of their counter-attack actions against the new constitution. Even though this is something that can't be considered due to past experiences, some news sources are reporting that a group of 11 civil society organizations in Togo have voiced their concerns over the postponement of elections and the government's proposed constitutional revision. They argue that the holding of legislative and regional elections which are constitutionally mandated, should not be connected to the government's controversial constitutional changes. The coalition has called on the international community to take action, condemning the government's restriction of citizens' rights to protest and urging the United States, the European Union, Germany, France, the African Union and ECOWAS to push for the International Criminal Court to investigate the situation in Togo before it's too late. While the government asserts that it is not repressing its opposition, but rather maintaining public order, the civil society organizations maintain that the situation is dire and requires immediate attention. The political tensions in Faure Nyasingbe's country are a cause for concern. 
as the mediator in the affair of the 49 Ivorian soldiers detained in Mali, the question arises, how far will these tensions go? Unfortunately, this is not the first time that political violence has plagued the nation. To make matters worse, the country is also dealing with terrorist incursions in its northern region. The situation is complex and the stakes are high. It remains to be seen what the future holds for this troubled nation. The coup d'etat pandemic, you understand? Niger, Burkina Faso, and now it's heading to Togo. Most of the West African countries are now, you know, doing the coup. The coup. So I don't know. Um, I don't know where or when it will hit Ghana, you understand? But we pray that now nothing like that happens in Ghana, you understand? The reason for the coup d'etat is just simple. They have drafted a constitution, and that constitution is to only allow members of parliament to vote, to choose president. And that is all. So no citizen can go and then vote again. So like in Ghana right now, if that constitution is to be in Ghana, it's only members of parliament that is going to vote for either John Dramani Mahama or Dr. Mahmoud Baumia this 2024. That is the constitution that has been passed in Togo. And right now the people said, nah, you can't decide for us who should be the president, you understand? We can't allow court of only few members to decide. So we said no, and now if action is not taken immediately, there is going to be a serious coup d'etat. This is constitutional coup d'etat that we are talking about right now. And if the real coup d'etat reaches, you feel the update and feel the vibe. So kindly stay tuned and subscribe to this channel and like the video so that if there is any update next time, you'll be the first person to get. So ladies and gentlemen, and now the military is taking over. Right now it is happening in Togo, and it means say if something is not done fast and quick and uh, the, the, the shot of the story was that they want to, to maintain the person as the president so due to that they are passing a constitution which will only allow members of parliament to vote so that they can remain in power you understand and this is what the people said no you can't tell us who we should who not like i'm a citizen you can't tell me who to vote i have to choose free freedom you understand freedom the right to vote the right to decision making, you understand? This is what is happening in Togo currently. Yes, basically, that is the overview of the whole thing. What is happening currently in Togo? Constitutional coup d'etat. And this is for the constitution. They want to, you know, throw the decision that has been made right now. And if that fails, and if that fails, it means that there is going to be a serious coup d'etat, which we wouldn't, you know, like to experience something like that. So, um, that is basically what is happening out there and we are ready to bring to you updates, any trending news out there for you to also feel the vibe, you understand? So, kindly hit on the subscribe button and like the video and then if you have any comment, come to the comment section and we'll see you next time in our next video. So, ladies and gentlemen, bye.